All right. Can switch to the desk cam instead of the uh, butt cam. Oh no, it's got like hot glue over here. There was a local company that was having a moving sale around here and I just randomly happened to cross it and saw these sitting out there. And I was like, how much do you want for those? And gave him some cash and took them home. So I got two of these test fixtures that used to be used by a local hardware company to test stuff that they were manufacturing. So we've got power supply and some custom boards down there. I think the deal behind this is that these would run some automated tests after the microcontrollers were already programmed. So there was a different jig they would use for programming. You'd have a panel of circuit boards that you'd place with the uh, like alignment holes on these things and they would center on these cones. And then I think there might have been another pressing piece or something that keeps these down. There's another, there's another piece on the other one, which I'll show you, but and this goes down and presses on the tops of the boards and you can adjust these to press somewhere where it isn't going to damage the board. And then the idea is that sandwiches everything together with some pressure and then these little pogo pins actually press on the test points. Um, and that's actually how we get a connection to run the automated testing. A lot of kind of custom looking aluminum parts here. And this is like quarter inch acrylic. And this is FR4. This whole thing is fiberglass on the top. It's pretty interesting. It's got these milled pockets on the top too. I don't know why it has pockets milled. You can like press this and lock it open, I guess. Those are just wires from the end of a ribbon cable soldered onto the pogo pin ends. There's some LEDs. Not quite sure what kind of power we've got down there. I think the sticker is on the side that's closest to the bottom. Some kind of smallish power supply. And then there's the main event. Yeah, that's interesting. So on this side, we've got these um, three of these little devices. We'll have to maybe see what those are. Um, I think it might be nice just to take this whole board out and look at, it under, look at it under the microscope. So this was like a bike light product. I think, um, well, so the other one we have, I think we might actually see some, some LEDs in it. Um, this one, I think these banks of diodes might be to simulate LEDs, but I'm not actually sure. They might be for something else. Yeah, it would be interesting to look at the firmware, right? I think that's even an Atmel ICSP header. This is the button on the front panel. Probably the button that starts the test. I'm guessing it's a 5 volt power supply. So this is another one of those things that was just like an impulsive find. I don't really know what to make a video about related to this. I might just use the parts for something. Um, it might be an opportunity to talk about test fixturing and design for manufacture. Oh, there's some spacers in here, too. The little kickstand case thing is pretty cool. One of the bolts holding the power supply on is already gone. Oh, this is a TDK Lambda 5 volt 10 amp supply. Wow. This power supply is definitely worth what I paid for this. Name brand and 50 watts. I would also ground the chassis on this box. I don't think they've done that, at least other than through this screw. And just everything about this is pretty nice. Like even this button, the button has a flat milled in it, so it only latches in one orientation. Put together by Test X. This is a little uh, questionable as a strain relief, I think. There's this meme I think I have a bunch of, that I think a bunch of people have who picked it up from like Dave on EEB blog who they would see something like that and be like, ah, it's about how you doing. I don't know if that's like an Australian thing or just like something he says or whatever. And it's kind of cute, but I think it also kind of makes you not really stop to think like, well, what is the actual problem here? Because the I think the the first intuition I have is like, oh, that just looks terrible. But a lot of things that look terrible aren't really a problem. I think the reason my intuition is that that's bad is that it isn't a good strain relief and that the wire will gradually wear up against this metal thing, but it's not that big a deal. This will just crumble apart with some isopropanol probably. Yeah, it's a good power supply and with 10 amps, like, actually it, this would be a good home for a Raspberry Pi, don't you think? The metal box might make it a little hard to get Wi-Fi in and out, but I'd probably want to add ethernet anyway. Maybe add an IEC inlet for power so this doesn't sketch me out. Maybe maybe ground the case. That would be good too. 
At Mega 48, huh? So it has five of these. This whole thing is just like five copies of the same circuit, it looks like. And so I assume this just runs a bunch of tests on each unit in parallel and they all get separate pass or fail lights. Got some power resistors we can switch in and out. That might be more like load testing or current measurement stuff. Like for a test jig like this, you would probably want to measure the current of the device under test. Um, but I don't see any like A to D or amplifier kind of stuff around here. So this might just be a load. That might just be a transistor turning the load on and off. And then here's that big field of diodes I was talking about. Lots of solder paste residue from this. Um, conductive debris, as I would call it. You can't really nitpick about the quality of something that's like built just for, um, just for testing though. Like it's it's always nice when that stuff is shiny, but it really doesn't have to be. I hope that's like flux on that resistor and not a burn mark. It looks like they just didn't clean this much after soldering and it was fine for them. It just doesn't look good under a microscope. And also no solder mask, which makes that kind of stuff harder. I think these are for driving the status LEDs. So this section is only populated on one of the boards. It's got this copy of the circuit, uh, six inverters and a, sh well, Schmidt trigger input inverters. I think that's where the front panel button was attached. So yeah, this board itself probably doesn't have that much that's useful on it, but we could see if we can program slash read back these at megas. I need more desk space for this. Yeah, this thing is kind of intense. Um, this was apparently used to test the um, the LED drivers and the accelerometer and the Hall effect sensor. And this runs off of a smaller power adapter. This is five volts, two amps. Very dusty. I think this is just a leash. I think it's just a magnet on the end of this. I think the idea is that there is some point at which the operator has to wave this um, around in here. The guy who sold me this was telling me about how the test worked. Like you had to like stick this in at some point. There's a USB cable coming out of the top for some reason. So yeah, it's got a flat on one side here that's been milled down. That clamp presses on to hold it study, but otherwise this wheel on the other side lets you swing it around. So similar board mounting method this way. Looks like there's some tap tools up here too. It's nice. And this is similar. This has a like a tray in here. So there are different positions this fits in. I don't know why, maybe there were some different alignments that they needed. Um, and this would be a panel with several boards, I guess five at a time. This one's a lot more complicated. Kind of like it definitely doesn't smell like the outside. It smells, I don't know, kind of like this weird mixture of like oil and flux and like new plastics and stuff. So it doesn't quite want to open all the way. I think these wires are too short. These bottom plugs next to the LEDs, so this one's already come loose. Um, those go to these lowest pogo, pogo pins. So yeah, a few switches on the front that go back left, back these front lines of pogos go to the connectors next to these banks of LEDs, which I think were like dummy loads for the bike lights. I'm assuming that this might be also testing both power in and power out when they're running. The very next bank of pogos, like right behind the LEDs, go to a little four pin thing that 
is plugged in right next to the processor. This little board is connected to all the programming ports on all the micros. Are they just all connected in parallel so you can program them all at the same time or something? Or daisy chained? That's interesting. I think this is the in circuit serial, serial programming, but maybe it isn't. Oh yeah, maybe the one down here is in circuit serial, and this is just something else that also has six pins. Because these all go to a board where they seem to be either connected together or daisy chained, and then there's a, one free on the end. My guess is, this, is that this might be serial port. Maybe they're daisy chaining serial ports, um, and maybe that works with some kind of bootloader that they've got installed. That's interesting. And then this one at the very end was dangling out, like you could plug it into something off board. This looks like another LED bank up here, same kind of um, six pin arrangement. And then these red and black ones go to the LEDs. These are like status output LEDs for the tests. But it looks like they're just using that for power. Uh, so I don't know, maybe someone wanted to charge their phone off the test harness. I think it's more likely that maybe something on the same panel, like something on the panel had a USB type B jack. But I kind of assumed their product wouldn't have a USB type B because it's like a bike light, right? Wouldn't have a full size USB connector. Did they take the bottom? They might have taken the whole bottom of this case off to get this plug through, actually. I assume some of that is like package code, but it just... Yeah, I don't know what that first line means, but it, it's a shift register of some sort. And there's two of these per row. There's five of these rows. So it goes from there to right there, and then it repeats. So we have five rows, red and white LEDs. That's the header that was not connected, that little one. That's the header that was. That's another at Mega 48, more LEDs. Those six pin things might've been some kind of driver, maybe just a inverter or a buffer or something. It's like two power pins and then four signal. And then 74 AHCT 14, which is that hex Schmidt trigger again, capacitors. And that's what we've got. These holes, I think, are the power inlet. This whole thing is just copy pasted. So the one on the far right is actually um, is actually populated. This is the boundary between two modules right here. There's nothing going between them until right here and right there and this whole bus. So that is the positive pin from the power. It's not quite clear to me how, how uh, ground actually gets to this bottom rail, but I think that's ground. I have an AVR Dragon somewhere. I can't remember if I misplaced it or if I let somebody borrow it at this point. See, we're talking to AV, the device just fine. It's just not talking to the other end. So um, this looks like a problem with the target. Like it's just not running, like it's held in reset. Um, no, it certainly could have the protection bit set um, I would expect a different error, though. I don't think that completely disables the ICSP port. I would find it really unlikely for the factory test jig to have the ICSP port completely disabled, even if they have code protection, uh, um, you know, code protection, like code readout protection enabled. So I, I strongly believe that there's just something I'm doing wrong here or some brokenness that is not actually part of the design, but I, I don't think I don't think we're hitting like a lockout yet. Yeah. That's wired totally standardly. Oh, was that a reset pulse? That's a reset pulse. Oh, there's a bodge on the reset on this board. So all of these look pretty much the same. That bodge is on pin one, seems to be connecting pin one to reset. If you follow this trace up, that pin is reset. So this is a pull up reset, all of that's good so far. But, is that via? No, that via. Let's see if reset is still set to 10 here. Technical debt, I've got like cords on top of my keyboard. I think I'm just getting tired and I'm starting to make stupid mistakes and not making a lot of forward progress. So maybe this is a good time to end the stream. 
Um, I don't know why my ISP here is not sending out a proper reset. I think that there's just something wrong with my setup here. I think the board is fine. I think the board has probably even got firmware readout enabled. I think I'm just failing to set this up properly. So we'll deal with this some other time. Let me know what you thought, um, especially if you have any ideas for where to take these particular projects in the future. I think at the very least that was an interesting um, like kind of garage sale sort of find, and maybe we'll even be able to turn this into something more useful for us or something, or make something interesting with that uh, enclosure at the very least. So.